In this video, we provide the solution to question number six for practice exam number two for math 1220, in which case we have to evaluate the trigonometric integral cosine to the fourth uh, of 2x dx. So because we have these cosine to the fourth, we only have cosines, no sines. We really can't make a U substitution work here. We're going to want to utilize the half angle identity here. So recall that if you take cosine squared of theta, this is equal to one half, one plus cosine of two theta. And so that's what we're going to try to use here. So we rewrite this. Um, upon doing so, we would get one half. Well, you have to also realize that, let me step back for a second. We have to realize that this cosine to the fourth is going to be a cosine squared of 2x, itself quantity squared. Um, and so when we apply the half angle identity, we're going to have to square everything in there. So we get the one half, one plus cosine of 4x squared. Uh, so we're going to have to foil that out. The one half squared gives us a one fourth. I'm going to put that in front of the integral there. So we have this one plus cosine to the four x squared. When you foil that out, you get one plus two times cosine of four x. And then we have also a uh, cosine squared of four x dx. So that second cosine squared that we now have, cosine squared of four x, we've got to apply the half angle identity to that as well. Uh, so we have to apply it twice. Upon doing so, uh, we're still going to have the 1, the 2 cosine of 4x. That all stays the same. Um, if you're not using parentheses on your angle here, do make sure your 4 looks small. You wouldn't want it to accidentally turn into like a uh, cosine to the 4th, right? Notice like what's the difference there? Cosine to the 4th x or 4x. You have to be very careful to make sure it's a coefficient and not an exponent there. Uh, but for the second piece, we have 1 half, 1 plus cosine of 8x like so. And before calculating the antiderivative, I'm going to take the liberty of combining some like terms. Because uh, after all, we have this constant one right here, this constant one half. Um, I'm also just going to take the liberty of distributing the one fourth through. Um, so we're going to have one plus one half, which is three halves times that by one fourth. That's going to give us three eighths. It's the first one there. Uh, then the next one, when you take two, we distribute the one fourth onto the cosine of four X. Since there's a two there, that'll then become one half cosine of 4x. And then on the last one, you distribute this 1 half on there, but then you spit out the 1 fourth as well. So you get this 1 eighth in that situation, um, cosine of 8x, like so. And now we're ready to take the antiderivative. So when we put all of this together, the 3 eighths, when you take the antiderivative, become 3x over 8. Then for the next one, we have a um, one half cosine of four x. As you take the antiderivative of cosine, it becomes sine. But then by the chain rule, you do have to divide by that four there. So we're going to end up with a one eighth sine of four x. And then for the last one here, same basic idea. When you take the derivative of the cosine, it becomes a sine. But because of how the chain rule works, we're going to have to divide by eight. You already have a one eighth there, so you get a coefficient of one sixty fourth. Uh, sine of 8x. I am putting parentheses on it now so to make it very clear that these are coefficients and not exponents. And then don't forget your constant at the very end. That then gives us the correct antiderivative. 